We should, we should talk now. about that. You've gotten go. some hints when you see some of the rankings uh, of the bowl game matchups. So here is the college football playoff, the final rankings. Remember, they don't do a ranking after the bowl games. This is it. Presented by AT&T 5G. Texas A&M stays in at number 25. San Diego State had a had a big problem with COVID yesterday. They lost a ton of regular players. I don't want to take anything away from Utah State. Uh, who won the Mountain West, but San Diego State, after losing that game handily, slips five spots. And you knew that was, they were going to lose handily because we all picked San Diego State on set at game day. So. I think it had more yeah. to do with the COVID. How about the way um, Louisiana the, played? Yeah. Billy Napier's yeah. last game before going yep. to the University of Florida looked real good against App State. Levi Lewis throwing and running. Good season for Louisiana. We did, they lost that opener against Texas, 12-1 yep. and one now. We'll go into the postseason. Kentucky and Arkansas in the rank there after – uh, Houston played well enough to move up the spot. Yeah. Uh, they're at number 20 now. Clemson keeps etching, eking up as they off to a slow start. NC State, Wake Forest, that's a whole ACC group there. And Oklahoma sliding back a couple of spots. Well, that's always a thing. People look at, well, how can you move up? Well, they also played on championship weekend. Nobody else did, so had an opportunity. They went well. Oh, horrible. But Clemson, how about that? Like, from where they started? Yeah. I think we all were like, eh, that was pretty horrible. They're going to need to change a lot of things. They did. Offense got better, finished strong. Win a bowl game and Clemson wins 10 again. Poor old Clemson. <laughs> Having an off Roy season. Bus. Still win 10 games, right? <laughs> Roy Buss took a detour next year, this year. Next year will be Roy Buss all the start of <laughs> oh, the season. Oh, yeah. You, you know it. here. You have to find a new defensive coordinator if this thing goes through. Yeah. As Chris Lowe yeah. has been reporting with Venables going to Oklahoma and Clemson and Oklahoma have met in bowl games in Great recent season years. With, with Venables getting the better of it, actually, yeah. in those did Houston games, moved up one spot. They did. Yeah, Houston yeah. went on a run in there of winning 11, winning 10 straight there in the middle of their season. I thought they should have gotten a lot more respect early on. But after the AAC championship game, when Cincinnati just came in with just dominated that game, it's interesting to see Houston actually moves. You're, you're seeing a bit of an indicator, too, why maybe Georgia slipped all the way down to three. Again, you look at their best wins on the year, Clemson, Kentucky, you just saw all three. Arkansas. You just saw all three. Saw them, Nobody yeah. ranked in the top 18. And okay, don't, let's don't lose perspective at. of how great a season. I mean, Dave Dorn, some, these teams, yeah. some of these teams, very, very happy to, to have a chance to go out a winner, finish in the top 15, maybe. Yeah, Dave Dorn's team was uh, just an eyelash away from playing for yeah. the ACC championship. At number 15, Iowa slipped down two after – Taking a whipping at the hands of Michigan, Oregon, the same thing at the hands of Utah. BYU lost Zach Wilson, lost a lot of those guys. You know, the 10 win season lost Jeff Grimes, their offensive coordinator. Pittsburgh up to number 12 as champions of the ACC, the Panthers' first outright conference title ever in the Pac 12 champion, Utah Utes at 11. So BYU slipping one spot. Of course, they didn't play this weekend. Did that knock them out of the New Year's Six Bowl game as a potential at large, not being in the top 12 race? Have to have to check. They would have to go as an at large, and there would have to be oh, spots that's just open. A, if that were the case, that'd be a bit of a gut punch. I thought I thought once I thought once Cincinnati went to the playoff, I thought that took away. They're well, not a group of five. Remember, they're not in that. Yeah, oh, they're okay. independent. Group when, of five. When, they're not in. When the I look at this graphic, at large. The, the one thing that comes to mind is is that is that as far of a gap that's fair between Utah and Oregon? It seems like it's it's as large as the state of Texas. And here they are, 11 and 14. You, Utah could not be any more emphatic over Oregon. I, I agree, Twice. but the, but the fellows in blue Twice. would say yeah. BYU would say not only do we have a better record than Utah, we beat them, beat them head to head. Yeah, yeah. and they well, like you said on on game day yesterday, different. Utah is the USC that year that Sam Darnold got inserted. This year it's Cam Rising getting inserted to Utah. If we had an 8 team or a 12 team playoff, Utah would be the team you do not want to play right now based on the way they play these last it's three or four weeks. It's that simple. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, in, in conference play, yeah, the, the insertion definitely changed. Moving in to the top ten now. We've seen some of these because they're in the New Year's six games. Michigan State's at number ten. Oklahoma State slips four spots uh, down to number nine. Ole Miss and then Baylor uh, is at is at number seven. Uh, Bear, what's your reaction here? I think we got some excitement and, and some like possibilities here with some of these other New Year's six games, like a lot of times you you probably have some some disappointing teams that maybe won't take these games seriously. But you look at that Sugar Bowl, I mean, we, when we were down there for game day a couple weeks ago, all they were talking about is, can we get to the Sugar Bowl? Can we get to the Sugar Bowl? And mm -hmm. here they are against a Baylor team that I think will be excited to being Big Bowl champions. I think that's going to be a really anticipated game between both fan bases. 
Um, the, obviously, the Notre Dame, um, Oklahoma State one. Yeah. Uh, we, we, I think that's going to be a very defensive minded game. And again, the opportunity for, for Marcus Freeman to be a, his first game as a head coach to break that New Year's Six BCS bowl game drought against an Oklahoma State team that probably isn't going to score a whole lot of points. Uh, really good opportunity for, uh, for his coaching era to get off to a good start. Yeah, that's for sure. So- Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.